This is Sonic Control's Doll School, where you learn how to plan and buy the right computer system to record your music. So get ready, because here comes the teacher. Hello, I'm Peter Alexander, and welcome to Daw School. Now, last time I said we were going to talk about Apple versus IBM, and true to my word, that's exactly what we're going to do. Now, I'm going to give you some thoughts and observations that are strictly my own, um, Macites across the web and the rest of the universe uh, may not agree with my observations. Um, Apple may not agree with my observations, and if they don't, um, there's, I invite them to come on to DOS School and to share their view and input. But I think what I've got here is a very interesting view for you of the differences between the PC and an Apple system separate from the software. So, to talk about uh, Apple, believe it or not, we really have to look at IBM. Um, and the joke about IBM is that the initials IBM, instead of standing for International Business Machine, um, actually are short for It's Big Money. Um, and there was a reason for that joke, and that was because IBM is a top-flight company uh, when it comes to service and they are absolutely top flight in the development of their systems. Now IBM has been known up until the age of the PC as a company who made mainframe computers. So this forms the basis of uh, the Alexander theory of the Apple Macintosh. Um, so let's kind of go through some points about IBM. The first one, as I just mentioned, is IBM built their own computers. Uh, these are called mainframes. The second thing is that to power their own computers, they had their own operating system. Then IBM had their own proprietary software applications. Then they had third-party software applications. And as far as sales were concerned, you could only get an IBM system from IBM. And so the systems were direct from IBM uh, for a number of years up through the 90s. Believe it or not, you rented systems from IBM, and that rental income provided IBM with substantial cash flow. So you rented the system, you got a service contract, and all of that was handled direct between you and IBM. If you had a problem, IBM service was so top flight they prided themselves in being able to get people out to your location within 24 hours to get it fixed. And the type of service and dedication stories about IBM are the stuff of legend in the business community. Then there came the time when IBM built something called a personal computer, which ended up being called a PC. Now, You've already heard some simil some things that sounded very much like Apple. So let's see what happened when IBM got to the PC. Well, they built their own IBM PCs. Then they had their own operating system. And they had their own operating system before they went and cut a deal with a very young Bill Gates who had a company called Microsoft, out of which came MS-DOS. IBM had their own proprietary software for the IBM PCs, and they had third-party developed software for the PCs. Okay, so far it sounds just like Apple. Now, the next thing is IBM sold direct to customers. You could, If you were a corporate customer, you just ordered direct from IBM. If you were an individual or a retailer, at one time IBM had the IBM store. And you go to the IBM store, where it was big money there too, because you paid full price for IBM computers and software, but you got service and support with it. That was a huge difference at that retail level. And then IBM made a decision that was very critical. They decided that they would sell the IBM PC through retail channels. And this is where IBM got a very serious shock to the system. And I know this because 
a number of years ago, two people who did the research for IBM wrote a book about this. And um, I found a copy of it and it was very interesting reading. Because what happened was, when the IBM PC was released into the retail community, instead of upholding the price, instead of giving customer service, boy, don't you wish you had that on your computer today, huh? Service. What happened was all the retailers cut the price. And it turned into a we've got the lowest price kind of a deal. And that type of a situation is called commodity pricing. And at that point, instead of having uh, specialty retail items, you are now, you know, you might as well be selling celery. Because what's going on is that you're selling it for the lowest possible price. And when you see somebody doing um, a sales approach that goes on a will beat any deal uh, and so on, that's called commodity pricing. And generally, unless that company has an extraordinary, I mean extraordinary amount of sales volume business, usually those companies go out of business because you can look the price of the product can be this big, but the amount of margin that you have is about that big. Sorry, I'll give it to you this way, that big. And that little teeny weeny slice there, well, that's what pays the bills. So the smaller that slice, the more those systems you have to sell just to break even and pay your bills. And so what happens is you go out of business. Well, obviously, IBM wasn't going to go out of business. But when they saw what was going on, they began doing studies and spreadsheets and brought in a bunch of smart financial people. And they discovered that when an item goes into commodity status, you can't make money in that industry. And so IBM withdrew the IBM PC from the market. And you will also notice that at one time IBM made a ThinkPad. The ThinkPad is also now gone. Lenovo now makes the IB, what used to be called the IBM ThinkPads. And so with that little history, we can begin looking at Apple and seeing what's going on today. So uh, I have my notes here because this is uh, more than my brain is capable of handling. So let's consider Apple and what's going on with those folks. Well, like IBM, they build their own computers. Like IBM, they created their own operating system. Like IBM, they have their own proprietary software. And in music, you already know that's Apple Logic. Um, they also have iWork and iLife and uh, Final Cut Pro, Final Cut Express, and a number of other excellent programs. So they make their own proprietary software, and there is third-party software. So on the Mac, that would be Digital Performer. Uh, it can also be Nuendo or Cubase from Steinberg. And there, there are other programs, obviously, but those are just a few third-party programs. You buy the hardware and the software from Apple directly, and when it comes to servicing, they don't service it. They have a series of centers out there that are certified by Apple to be Apple certified centers, and those companies can also sell Apple hardware and software. And the main part of the servicing comes from what's called Apple Care, which is basically a service policy, and that creates, by the way, extraordinary cash flow because the machines are built well then you don't need to use Apple Care too often. And so that warranty becomes a huge um, cash flow business for Apple. 